Okay, welcome back. It's time for our first hot topic. Justice Belo Kawu of a high court in Abuja on Friday declared as illegal, unlawful, null and void the continued detention of the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Amefele, by the DSS. The voiding of Amefele's detention by Justice Kawu came barely 24 hours after a sister court presided by Justice Hamza Moazu had ordered the DSS to, within seven days, charge Amefele to court over his alleged crimes or set him free. We have been joined by a legal practitioner, Mr. Justin Johnson Agu, to take a look at this very important matter that's unfolding before us. Good morning to you, Mr. Agu. You. Okay, when Amefele was arrested, part of the concerns we raised on this program was a process because even though Nigerians wanted to see him brought to book we wanted to make sure that the process was done within the ambits of the law and now his arrest detention interrogation you know has been said to to have been null and void because of the subsisting judgment and orders of justice M A Hassan in 2022 Talk to us about what appears to be executive rascality, which you've seen, especially since the administration of President, former President Muhammad Buhari, and now we're seeing it in this new administration. You see, um, if this is a very tough uh, issue, I accept that the executive has not been forthright. They have ostensibly used their powers the wrong way. I'm not saying that they do not have the powers of arrest, investigation, and prosecution. They do. Well, but what citizens are concerned about is how they exercise these powers and for what purpose they exercise these powers. Uh, if you look at these issues quite critically and quite closely, you will notice that prior to the a, a so-called election and swearing on of this particular president, he had singled out Mr. Emefene for what I would call punishment should, or if and when he becomes a president. What he says is Mr. Emefene's um, um, crimes at the time he was making his open declaration are related to Emefene's attempt in quotes to stop him from being the president. So it brings into question all that, I mean, like all the allegations that have been made against Emily and suggest that there is another reason other than so called crimes that Mr. Emily has purportedly committed. This is what we knew the last administration to do. They have grudges against citizens and they use the prosecutorial powers of the Nigerian state to pursue what we should call personal and individual grudges against citizens of the country. I believe that is wrong. I was reading a comment somewhere, and uh, some Nigerian was saying that MFL should be released forthwith because um, even if he has committed offenses, the individuals or the persons exercising governmental powers now are clearly pursuing vendetta as opposed to uh, pursuing the rule of law to bring him to account. And another person commented and said, this is happening in the social media, another person commented, we are releasing Mr. Mayfield, bring back all those who have died as a result of Mr. Mayfield's uh, uh, policy. Then another person interjected and said, if his policies constitute a crime, charge him specifically for those crimes that his policies or his actions have constituted, if he is liable, or if you believe he's liable for those specific actions, and uh, he is not protected by public, public, public officers' protection rules, if you believe that he is liable for actions that he has done pursuant to uh, his, the duties of his office, charge him specifically for those actions. Don't hold him indefinitely. This is key. 
it means that the citizens of the country are aware that nobody should be held indefinitely and for undisclosed or unspecified reasons. And if you look properly, the content of um, the justice uh, uh, MPA Hazan's orders of 2022 relates to the alleged uh, economic and financial uh, crimes or money laundering or whatever, whatever. And that appears to be the reason why DSF is not looking in that direction to charge him in that direction. One would have expected DSF if they believed it, they have such grounds to appeal the ju judgment of MPA Hazan instead of holding MFA like. Dasuki was held by the previous administration, but well, they haven't done that direct. Uh, they haven't gone that direction, and they are holding Mr. Mifle in a way that our law does not accept. I am not saying that Mr. Mifle is innocent of anything, but what I will join other Nigerians to say is that any person who has committed a specific offence should be charged specifically for what he has been, uh, what he has committed. And if there is no evidence yet, he should not be arrested. If he is arrested, it should mean that investigation has gone at least very advanced. And what is now remaining is just hearing his own side administratively before the decision whether to bring him before a judas is made. And upon his arrest, the decision to charge him or not charge him should be made immediately else, he should be given what we call administrative bail to enable him to come back for investigation at the time required. Otherwise, he should be free. And I think that's the content of what the last um, Judith who spoke on this matter last time. Uh, Mr. So, Mr. Agu, let me, let me get this straight. Is a Mephele yes. being held because of crimes he committed as a person or because of the policies he formulated or brought into uh, his administration, uh, what is it that is being held for? Can you be held by law? Let me just say this. Can, by law, can you be held in custody or charged to court because of policies you made? For instance, an education minister makes a policy in his ministry that there is no more uh, school fee and a lot of people drop out of school. Can he be charged to court because of that? Why is Emefile being held in the first place? This is a very interesting question. It's, uh, it, it appears that the operators of the Nigerian state, the Nigerian uh, government powers, have not been able to separate the individual from the functions of this office. By our law, a person can only be criminally li liable for the conduct he himself does for himself, which constitutes a crime. If he exercises the functions of an office, how be it unlawfully, it, it, the question will not be, has he abused the powers of his office? So he will be punished for abuse of powers, and especially when he has corruptly enriched himself by use of the powers of the office, or enriched someone else. But if he does something that is abusive of his powers, he will be punished. But that, again, we tie down to his person, because it is him who personally abuses his powers, the powers of the functions of office. Mm. But if he exercises the functions of his office within the ambit of that power, for example, you just made an illustration. Somebody making a policy that requires students to start paying uh, uh, fees for tuition in federal institutions or state institutions, that policy itself is within the powers of say, the education minister and the mm -hmm. president, mm -hmm. uh, or the commissioner for education and the governor, or even if it were uh, 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 private schools within the principal and his proprietor. So these are all functions that they can do because they occupy that office. Now, they are not liable because they have exercised it on behalf of higher powers. If we believe that school fees should not be paid. We either make law to outlaw school fees or we go to court to explain to the court why the existing laws outlaw school fees and the court will strike out that function specifically. But making that function uh, um, exercise of power in the first place is itself 
not a crime. And if anyone thinks it is a crime, the proper thing the person will do is to present the, the so-called accused person before a judas for the judas and tell the judas what constitutes that concept of uh, conduct of policy making into a crime and probably if we see the slants if we see the defense the person has introduced we will see if that is within any written law because nobody is actually meant to be tried or convicted of, for conducts which do not constitute offenses at the time the person con uh, conducted himself or behaved in such manner this is why we have a problem with the way the administration, including the last one, has handled prosecutorial powers and discretion. Okay, well, the ES, uh, DSS is now claiming that they have now charged him to court in line with the court order that says release him, charge him to court, or release him uh, immediately. They gave seven days to DSS to do that. Now that they say that they've charged him to court, does it hold any kind of water? With this latest it's, judge judgment, it sounds nonsensical. It sounds nonsensical. Let me tell you how it works. If, you, of course, if I commit ten offences, the DSS, if it is within their purview, can charge me for just one instead of all the ten. But the question is, when you arrested me, for what did you arrest me? Mm. If you arrested me for chewing chewing gum and you discover that chewing chewing gum is not an offense, you should not start saying that I, I, I slept with my neighbor's wife in Kaduna, which is an offense of adultery. Because at the time you were arresting me for chewing chewing gum, whether you, in fact, the only issue of my sleeping with my neighbor's wife was not in question. But if for example, okay, like they said that they, when they went to search his house or when they went to arrest him in his house, they discovered that he has um, firearms and, and some pieces of munition. I'm not saying that is not an offense. If you possess firearms without license, you will likely be guilty of the offense of possession of firearms. Unless the issue it, it is proven that you are not in fact, possessing it, being in custody of something or something being found around you is not, not the same as being in possession of it. In law, we have what, what we call animus possidendi, that is intention to possess. So if somebody has planted something on you, like if, for example, Amy Fili is sitting in his house and they carried firearms and dropped it on his lap and snapped him picture and said they discovered firearms on him, that is not possession of firearms. We do not know all of these things. Of course, the matter has been brought before the court. But the idea that they arrested him for terrorism and uh, uh, terrorism financing and uh, money laundering, and then they end up charging him for holding a, owning a pistol without license, suggests so witch hunt. I'm not saying that if he's guilty of that, he should not be tried for that. But we should be careful so, so that justice will be seen to be done when it is done. As in, there is this maxim in law we see that justice should be done and it should be manifestly seen to be done. So if a bystander is looking at this whole scenario and say, look, we are witch hunting this fellow, then it doesn't look like justice is being done. MFLA would have his own lawyers, I believe. They will speak for him or they will speak, he will speak for himself in the court concerning this whole thing. But as a conscientious member of the public, we owe it to ourselves to make comments on, of our belief or disbelief of the conduct of public officers. So the conduct I am commenting on is not a matter in the court, but the conduct of DSS as public officers or people exercising the powers of government, which we, which is deemed to have been donated to the, them by us, the citizens. All right, Mr. Even as we are concerned about the process, because we want to see things done within the ambit of the law, especially with respect to the democracy that we run as a people. We are also mindful of the fact that Godfin Omifele did some things that Nigerians suffered for, right? So, uh, and, and Nigerians believe that, most Nigerians I know, believe that he should also be brought to book for those things. How then should they go about doing this lawfully? It's quite simple. 
Do your investigations properly. Do your investigation. What are those things that he did? If we can enlist all of those things that he did, we invite him over, tell him, look, we want to charge you for so and so and so. What do you have to say about it? He will give us his own side at the administrative level. If it is the police that have custody, I mean, jurisdiction over that, or the PSC that have jurisdiction over that, or even the DSS, whichever public body that has jurisdiction over the things that we say um, definitely has done wrong, we invite him, tell him this is why we think he should be punished according to certain so sections of certain so law. If, of course, we will take record of what he will say, probably in the presence of his lawyer, according to administration of criminal justice law of the various states and all acts of the federation. We show him everything. He says his content, or his, uh, the content of his own mind, in the presence of his lawyer. We record him and bring the case to the court. I say to the court, look, we suspect that Mr. Emefile has gone to so and so and so. These are our evidence. This is what he said when we confronted him. And my lord, on the basis of this, ask him if he's guilty or not. The court will tell, ask him, Mr. Emefile, see the count that has been read against you. When I say count, I mean the charge in the, in the charge sheet, or information sheet, whatever name they now call it in the court. This is what it is brought before you, before me, against you. What do you have to say, guilty or not guilty? Emefile will plead. He can choose to say he is guilty before the court. He can choose to say he's not guilty. And if he says he's not guilty, it becomes our function as the society to prove to the court that Mr. Emefile has done those things we think are wrong according to laws that we have written before Mr. Emefile did what we say he has done. So if Mr. Emefile is found guilty by the court despite his own explanation, Mr. Emefile will be punished according to the law. But the situation of waking up one day and dreaming and fantasizing of, of what we say Mr. Emefile has done uh, uh, without him pointing what it is and confronting him with the procedure that the law has suggested. We might end up uh, uh, hunting a witch, and in this century, witch hunting is not exactly our the supposed specialty. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Let's, let's end the conversation there and watch how these things unfold. Thank you so much for your time this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Mr. Johnson Ago there joining us to take a look at the matters unfolding regarding uh, the CBN governor, the suspended CBN governor, Godwin Amalfele. Stay with us. We'll be back for our second hot topic. <laughs>